Two minutes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, two minutes is in. How are they? Four pass, should we start? Like the <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else can come in, Gonny. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so easy template overrides with custom fields. Basically, we'll show you how to make template overrides with custom fields, how you can access custom fields within the overrides, um, and then we'll show you how we have made it super easy with easy layouts. So a little bit about me. My name is Tony Partridge. I'm from the Isle of Man, which is a little dot in between England and Ireland, in the middle of the sea. Um, I'm lead support at JVents and now Easy Layouts. Um, I'm a Joomla contributor on GitHub. I help with marketing a little bit and on JUX. Um, I've originally been using Joomla for 10 years um, and I picked up Joomla for a local club and I fell in love with it ever since. Joomla is amazing, but there's always a but. With anything that's amazing, there's always a but. Joomla has limited display flexibility. So it, for an example's sake, an, ex, an estate agency such as a realtor's website may need the following. Energy efficiency and survey reports, floor, plan, floor plans, broadband availability, address information, and secure catchment information. A cookery website, for example, with recipes, we'll need a list of ingredients, preparation instructions, nutritional information, allergen lists. Clubs and societies may need information about their users, membership numbers, qualifications, team membership, competition match scores and results, all of which require solutions. So the current solutions at the moment would be Joomla user profile plugin, a CCK or a directory add-on. All are add-ons, adding on to the Joomla core. Again, special purpose components, um, custom components, template overrides, all needing additional work to expand the Joomla core and carry on. But there are downsides. They can be complex to implement. For example, edit and maintain user profile plugin XML files. You need to know XML becomes complicated, remembering where it is, how to do it. Template overrides require coding skills, usually HTML, CSS, and PHP. Custom extensions need to be written. Find a combination of add-ons that meet your needs. You will usually spend hours searching for the right add-ons, which are specific for your needs, because add-ons in general are a generalized solution. So they will cater for many needs, not just yours. So it can take quite a bit of time. CCKs are often unintuitive, trying to remember where you went to last time, what you did in the last one, whether that CCK was one you used previously, is it one you always use, and when you go back to it, it becomes complicated. We have the same with one of our sites, um, we're not naming any, but one in particular that we always use and we always forget how to do things in it, because it's not intuitive, it's not straight to the point. 
they're complex to manage. Maintaining template overrides and bespoke extensions. With Joomla updates, changing site requirements, it becomes expensive and hard to maintain. If your client asks for a new field in the extension you had custom built, you've got to go back to the developer, get it, get it added in, and then release it, update the website. Again, a lot of effort just to add a simple change. Same with template overrides. If you update Joomla from three to four, you've then got to refactor the template override to work with the G4, because it's very likely it's changed. Um, again, remembering how your CCK works. Can you? <laughs> Expensive to maintain and implement. Paying developers for template overrides and custom extensions adds up consistently because they're needed, but it becomes very expensive. CCKs are also very expensive in general. But the base is usually either three or quite cheap, but by the time you get the add-ons you need, it becomes expensive. So all of which cost money and time. And users yearn for the simplicity of Joomla content articles. Joomla content articles, everyone knows how to use a Joomla content article. You can add the information and it displays on your website. It works, everyone knows it. There's no different back end, there's no, nothing someone has to learn. Everyone can do it. Joomla 3.7 has a welcome new feature. Custom fields for core content types. Add custom fields to content, contacts, users, and so on. Third party add-ons can add support. No longer need for complex CCKs and user profile plugins for small to medium websites. So for example, the majority of people who, build, who are building websites only need custom fields or a CCK for like a portfolio or a user's directory. Something simple, it's got hundreds, maybe even thousands of pages, but not tens of thousands. So something that you can now manage in the core. But how do Joomla custom fields work? Will they work for you? By default, they are, they are enabled in Joomla content, contacts, and user profiles, as explained. Fields can be grouped, allocate specific categories, so you can now organize everything within com content. And it's 100% Joomla core. What can be better? You're following the core. So for example, in this talk, we're going to create a foodie website. So we've set up different fields for different content types, recipes, chefs, restaurants, by category, by group. And this will basically build a very basic and simple recipe website. So just the first step. Now to customize the output, well, how, how do you customize the output? We can create fields, we can add all the content, add in it's easy, really effective, all 100% Joomla, but the front end, how, how do you control it? <coughs> so you've got position the output by field, which is very basic, so you can control if it's at the top or the bottom of the article. Um, you've got very limited control. All of the custom fields controls are very limited in terms of how you can display it because Joomla doesn't know how your website will look. How can it magically know where you're going to display or want to display your custom field? It doesn't, it can't. So we, we want to display in lists versus articles and Garrett made a PR for that, um, which is 14641 on GitHub, which allows us to toggle whether we're displaying in lists or articles. And at the moment there's nothing in modules. So we need to be able to access custom fields more to display them on your website. So there are other options like the content plugin. This allows you to insert a custom field within your content. So if you were to write an article about a recipe, this recipe has ingredients in it and then you want to include them ingredients with inside the article, you can. You can use field and then the ID of the field. So in this case field one would be custom field ingredients um, and that's not very intuitive. It works, but I can't think of more than one or two scenarios where I might want to include the field within written content, and including tags. Asking your users to look up your custom field IDs, then make sure you remember that, and then it just doesn't work. So for your users, if you're building websites for your users, you need to make it intuitive and friendly. So layout overrides. We can do this with layout overrides. So with comp fields, the universal um, component specific comp content and special layouts, 
and then you can do template overrides. So what I'll do now is I'll go and show you a, sim a very simple way of changing how the layout override can change the way it looks on your website. Screen's so small. So if we go into this recipe, which is chicken katsu, you can see we have the custom fields, which we've added, are all just chucked at the bottom. Oh, excuse me. That, to me, is a mess. So in the back end, we've added it, and it's really easy to do. Viewable on the back end. So as you can see on the back end, we've added our um, recipe fields. So recipe fields is a, is a group. So we've got our ingredients, and this is a really neat and simple way of adding it, but the display on the front end doesn't, doesn't replicate how easy it is to add. Um, it just shows an absolute, well, a mess to me. Big image and a mess. So if we wanted to change how a field is output, we then have to do what are known as either layout overrides or template overrides, which Alan touched on in his speech today. Um, I will literally just touch on them very quickly to show a very basic example. So what you can do is you can go into the Joomla admin, go into extension templates, and we are just using a Utheme master free template. And then you can go to Come fields and create a template override. I've already clicked that and done that, so I'll just go into the editor and show you how they would look. Just <coughs> rename the folder. So in Come fields here. You'll see we've now got a render PHP file from creating the override. When we open that, there is code here. I've already manipulated the code slightly. So what we've done is we've gone into this line here, and we've gone at field type equals equals text. So if the field type is a text field, I'm going to output this is a text field. It's very simple, very basic. And all this code in this file is how you make it up. Basically, we're getting the field from display data and we're selecting the field directly. If you're unsure on how to get all the data out, you can put this up here in. It's called a var dump, and it will give you the display data that's available in that current field. So I'll show you, give you an example. So if I save that now, reload chicken katsu. You now can see the field which I've selected has all the available fields for that field. <laughs> um, so, for example, you've got value and raw value. Whilst in this, they are the same because com fields isn't formatting the output at all. But if you were to use an image, it would actually have a wrapper around the value. So, you would use raw value if you wanted a raw, raw value and so on. So that's a good way to get all the information off the field. So you can check the type is type text or type is type list. Um, then you've got the label, which should be translated. And then we've also got the access level and group title if you wanted to get into customizing it in the template override way. So how does it look? with my this is a text field. As you can see, all I've done is I've displayed 
composite and template override of a layout. And then we've added in the top one is a text field. So it's you can see it starts getting complicated to do this yourself for every single website. If you're having to do this for every single override, it, it gets complicated. If for a field ID changes, because at the moment you get the fields by ID, then you can't control how it's output. You've got to then get a developer back in to customize the output, which isn't intuitive. You can then, so that applies basically to the com fields for every <coughs> single field in the renderer. The good thing about custom fields is they are applicable per component. So you can use com content as an example um, here. So under layout com content, so that applies only to the layout of com content. And then we select the field folder again in the renderer. So basically what I've done there would only apply to com fields, uh, com content, sorry. And it works really well if you want to have multiple types of outputs for multiple components. Any questions about how the renderer works? No? So Alan did quickly touch on earlier, like I said, um, if you want to view his slides about more in-depth field overrides, because you can do it per plug and per type. Um, his slides do go into a bit more detail on that. So. Back to so what's the solution? One add-on to manage layouts for you. So we'll introduce you, Easy Layout. What is it and how does it work? It's Graphical Layout Manager. Create layouts for your content. Vary by view type, category, and module. Really is best explained by a demo, but in simple terms, it's like a page builder, but not a page. It's for template overrides. So page builders, I find the problem with page builders is they're quite slow. You've got to do it for every single page. If you've got a couple hundred pages on your site, you're going to be there for a while if someone wants to change a certain section of it throughout the entire site. So the demos. So I'll go into a live demo using, well, I've already sorry, gone into a live demo using layout overrides, and that shows how they're done. Using the template overrides, again, I've showed you how we've done that with the um, com content overrides. So easy layouts, the key features are core content, core Joomla custom fields, extra custom field types, example, linked items, maps, um, edit and manage a layout easily in one single overview in a Joomla native component. You are basically just customizing how it works with Joomla core. So it's like creating all that complex template override, but by drag and drop, no overhead, no CSS, no JS. It uses your template's um, CSS framework. So if you're using Bootstrap 2 or 3, you select Bootstrap 2 or 3, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, same with UIKit 2 or 3 as well. Um, you just select it, and all we do is build you the HTML markup with the PHP custom field built into it. <coughs> really simple, really easy, and it gets you. That should save you hours. Another benefit is filter menu items and modules by custom fields. Well, at the moment, Joomla doesn't allow you to do that. You can't do it natively. So if you have a menu item, like in this example, we'll show you, it's a foodie website, so you may be allergic to wheat. So you don't want to see any recipes with wheat in it, so you'll select an excluding wheat menu item. And the way that works is we've added a very swish um, filter into the menu item, and you can just select them easily. Layout versioning, roll back quickly and easily. Of course, we wouldn't be native Joomla if we didn't apply the layout versioning. So what happens is if you have a junior developer in-house who changes something, destroys the whole thing, you can just click versions and roll back and your website's back as it was. So.
So as you can see, this is how we have, let me just disable the overrides. It's hard on a small screen. <laughs> Right, so as you can see, this is the native Joomla output. This is what a Joomla website looks like when you've added the custom fields. Not so nice. So how does it look when I re-enable user layouts? So this is what we've created with a drag and drop system. All of a sudden, it's much better laid out. You've got the big image where you need it to be. You've got all the text. We've got the chef creator. We've now got a linked article here, which goes back to Luke Skywalker chef and we've got the list of ingredients and the allergens and then we've got the standard Joomla information there but that would take you at least a couple of hours to write to make up well it takes you almost minutes using easy layout So as I explained before, it's basically like a layout builder. So these are our rows, and then these are our grids, and these are all our fields. So if we want to add a field, it's as simple as going to any one of them which we want them to be. So we just click the plus sign, select field type. Well, we've added custom field, so why not add a, if I can select the right one, why not add a custom field? And then from here, you can select if the screen wasn't so small. Yes, scroll a bit. We can select one of our many custom fields. And then we can choose what to output to label the value. These are advanced options, which we've just enabled for now. This allows you, if you have some metadata or schema markup, we can wrap the custom field in that. It applies to also the rows and the grids in case you want to wrap some HTML around it. Um, again, metadata, schema, divs, grids, whatever you want really. If you want to wrap it personally, even just for an ID for styling, you can. And we've also custom field options, should there be any applicable. So for example, if we select an image, finish dish image, we've now got a scaling width for the image. So the benefit of the image field which we have added is it allows you to set your width and your height, but that's not just for display purposes. So when your user uploads a six or an eight megabyte image five times to the back end on each single article, you've suddenly got a very heavy, heavy article page, which will absolutely be pointless. Well, we allow you to specify the scaling image sizes so when that page is viewed, if the image doesn't exist in that size, we will generate one and then keep that. So the user, so the user's view in that page will only have a view at that size. And because we've scaled the image size, you've all of a sudden reduced your page size tenfold because you are using the smaller image size. So no more of this, you've uploaded the wrong image size, you've, you've done that, but because you've automated it, you don't have to worry about the user because the user doesn't know how to resize images a lot of the time. They're just uploading them. They're just trying to add the content. They don't know about graphic design and resizing. And obviously it's a drag and drop system, so we can just move them around wherever we want to. If we want to add multiple rows within multiple rows, as you can see, we can. And if we just want to move that up, we can just drag it up. If the screen was big enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've just added it inside the grid on the left. And if I want to roll it back, again, to click reversions, roll back. It'll show me what it quick brief over you what it is. And then I can select
And you see, it's, it's just rolled it back. Where does the CSS definition come into this? So the CSS definition is we define based on the standards of the framework. So you can see it's a little bit cluttered on the screen, unfortunately. But if you can see just here, output framework, you select the framework that you're using, Bootstrap 2, Bootstrap 3, UI Kit 2, UI Kit 3, whichever one you're using, we won't output you any CSS. We won't output you any JS because your template already has it. Why should we <coughs> add on top of that? It just doesn't make sense. It creates a heavy website. Um, so this makes it lean using complete Joomla core with the CSS and JS of your template. Even if you hire an extension developer, the chances of them using your template are low because they'll just write their own CSS for what they're doing for you. Um, so this allows it to work very easily and give you a very lean website at the same time. So at the moment, it's um, these layouts still technically in its alpha stage. So if you have any suggestions, any changes, any improvements, we've got tons. Um, then visit our website, easylayouts.net, add them, ask us questions, anything. Um, you're effectively paying, well, you're not paying anything. You're, you're effectively having um, myself and Geraint as developers to build this extension to your needs at the moment because we're in the alpha stage for nothing because we're in the alpha stage. It is, it is a commercial extension to be once it's in its um, final state. Um, but whatever the price we decide on, um, it's gonna be very cheap in comparison to the time that it would cost you to develop all this. Um, it's very simple, very easy, very intuitive. So we we'll touched quickly before on the um, menu items with the custom fields filtering. Now, at the moment, as I said before, you can't do it. So with Easy Layouts, we've added a little filter. So for example, we'll go to the excluding wheat one, because we don't want wheat recipes because we're allergic to them. And you can see our plugins added a little, little custom fields conditions tab. And within this, you've got conditions. How should the field um, constraints be combined? So the same as most conditioning type outputs. You've got show when all constraints are satisfied, show when any, um, show when no, show when all, show when any, hide, um, sorry, hide when all, hide when any, hide when no. And then, unfortunately, it's a little bit of a mess on the tiny screen. How did you get to that page again? Um, this is literally just in the um, menu item. So you edit your menu item, um, and then we've added a tab called Custom <laughs> Field Constraints. And unfortunately, yeah, we're just using native J form here, so it doesn't work very well on small screens. Um, let's see if I can zoom out a bit. Probably, can you read? No. Okay. Um, so basically, what you have is you've got your custom field. You can select any of the custom fields. So you could select custom cooking instructions if you really wanted to. But um, allergens is what we selected. And we've selected not equal to a given value because we don't want to show any recipes with wheat. Um, and then you literally just select the values of that custom field. So in this one, we've got wheat, we've got milk, nuts, because they are potential allergens for the person. If we want to add another one, we can. Then, <coughs> select an allergen but it's a multi-field so there's no need to select an allergen so you can do preparation time and if you know the value it's really bad on such a small screen <laughs> um, yeah you can't even see what's in there so it allows you to filter unfortunately it doesn't, just doesn't show it very well on such a small screen um, but it gives you full filter control within Joomla's natural J form and Joomla's natural core <coughs> We will be adding some more features too. Any questions? Yeah. So when you go into easy layouts, you can, let me see if I can, you can see you can now have category specific layout overrides. So by default, it will show you your categories. Yeah, if there are none, then it's not applied to. It's applied to all. Um, if it's individually applied, 
to Chef. And if there's more, then you can see we've added a little folder icon for usability and you hover over it to see all the recipes. This at the side is called the default. So this means the default override for the view. So in, at the moment, so component come content and article default would mean it's sort of a standard article override. So because we follow the natural Joomla structure, we kind of follow the MVC. If you are following me, no. Um, so basically, if you were to create an override for com content article, you would do it in your template directory. You go HTML, com content, article, um, and then article.php, for example, or default.php, and then you'd override. So what this says is the component is com content, and then it's article.default. Um, and that's a view it would naturally override because we are following the Joomla template override system exactly. But all we're doing is generating the template override on the fly. So it's really easy for you to create without having to touch the code. So you can apply them per category. So if you have chefs and restaurants, it's very unlikely you're going to want the same output for chefs if you do restaurants. So you'll want a different custom fields. So you'll want different positions. Um, so if you, so this is, for example, our recipe. If we go into chefs, go to Mr. Hatman, you can see we've got an image on the right opposed to the left, and his awards, his current restaurant, and information on the, the left hand side, which is obviously different to the chicken katsu because we've changed it around. Because layouts can now be category specific opposed to generalized and globalized. Um, this, therefore, gives you full control over Joomla's core com content rather than it being applicable only for content or whatever you add your custom fields for. You can now change the view for every single type of scenario you can think of within com content. So for example, you can have a recipes website, you can have your standard articles, you can now have your blog, and you can have um, a portfolio all within the one website or within com content. No need for four different components because you can do it within one. And if you, some people would say you could get, you could over, you could be convoluting com content, i.e., making it there's too much there. Well, no, because you categorize in com content, so you, you categorize all your items within com content. So you'd have your your, your um, portfolio, you'd have your recipes, and then you'd have all your subcategories. So it's really well organized. You can actually just filter by selecting your category, and you can have everything available to you. Um, makes it really intuitive, really easy. So for example, if you go into com content category, we can select the recipes, we can select the chefs, and we can now see all ones which apply to them. <laughs> um, all recipes which apply to strawberry. So as you can see, it's really easy to manage, all using native Joomla core. You've got no third party extensions so that when your core updates, break your website. Because our component is following the core very closely. Um, we will be adding for a higher level the possibility to export your template overrides out of easily out as to a PHP file. Um, something we're looking at because some users will want that. Um, but you would lose the filtering capabilities if you did that. Um, unless you kept the filtering plugin. What is the ability to be able to export them to another site? So if you yeah. set up a loan? Yeah. It's a standard portfolio layout, yeah, absolutely. You'll want to export your, your portfolio custom fields and so on because um, a lot of sites I develop, I know, have a portfolio section. So you would have about us, our users, or our portfolio, um, and then you'd have a standard makeup for that. To save you how to recreate that every time, yeah, absolutely. Um, just again, something we're looking into. The other thing is, as well, because this happens sometimes, is the customer doesn't know whether they want, some, some articles might have three images on the page, mm -hmm. they might only have one. Yep. So, you know, with Bootstrap, you, if you have three yep. images, you would obviously have span four, or span four, what is it now, uh, Col MD4? Yes, for Bootstrap thing. If there's thing. only one, um, you 
Baudelaire would still do... Would it, it still well, it depends how you were to define that. So you would have to... That's a slightly different scenario because you can't cater, you can't guess that. Yeah. Um, you would have to allow it and specify a default, and it would always apply to that default. Yeah. Um, I'm only thinking because I've got that specific problem yeah. on, on a site. The customer, some pages should want one, some, some yeah. three or four in a row. Right, okay. She wants them to be responsive, and she doesn't have to use responsive tables. Yeah. So are the articles then on different categories where she wants that, or is it potentially yeah, the same? It could, it, could be, it could be in the same category. So if she writes a, a sort of blog on recipes, yeah. and it just depends how many good pictures she gets <clears throat> of, of that recipe. Yeah. Um, well, she could add that into a gallery, and you would have to define a, a preset size. So if you defined a preset size of 300 by 400 with our um, gallery plugin, then add the multiple... Um, custom fields into that, then what you can do is it will always be displayed in that size and because you're using Bootstrap it will always fill the area it's in of that size. So if you have 20 images it will fill 20 images by the set width and just keep filling down. Um, and then obviously when they, they reach the full width of the screen they will narrowly shrink fine you've got a max width of 100. Okay. Okay. Because there's no way of defining the columns, yeah. un unless you were to dynamically test, but even if you dynamically test, you you're limited to what framework you're using. Yeah. Um, you, if it div divides, do you have one more or one less? It becomes very complicated for a very rare case scenario. Yeah. Yes? Um, did I got it right? So you're basically creating PHP files? Like so at the moment, we're basically creating on the fly the template override via a JSON store, right, isn't it? The store that the database is JSON, it's, yeah. not, it's not generating a template override. Right? No, not directly. It's acting as a template override right, would do as a dynamic file. Yeah. We're, we're planning on providing an export. For a template override right, file. generate a template override right, file. Because, um, my, because my question would be, the next question would be, can I somehow interfere with that, like when I want to say, I want to make like something in the override for whatever, but if you're doing that, just it's not possible. Well, you can customize it obviously in the template override. We are going to allow HTML, you've got HTML wrapper at the top and the bottom. So if you, um, I'll go and just explain. So for example, if you click customize on that, you can now wrap that custom field. So you can now give it custom styling. Um, so if you wanted to make it bold, you know, you can just put usual strong at the top and um, strong at the bottom. Now that field would be bold. That gives you the full control over it. And that's one of the main reasons we added the wrappers, um, because you will want to do that in some scenarios. Um, yeah. And we're going to be introducing conditional layers as well. So Display this field only if this other field has a value Yeah. Any more questions? How do you how do you make them that the standard I mean it's integrated with uh with events like the this after before display, the after display. How do you disable that? Is, is that through the setting of the field or how do we disable the before and after of the content? Yeah. Well, because we, we handle that all ourselves now with the template override. So where you're displaying it before and after the content, we remove that okay. and now you change where you're displaying it because you're loading our template override effectively. What exactly. Joomla yeah. telling you is yeah. irrelevant. That's one of the field types we've got is to output the plugin out the direction. Yes. So you've got all the field types which are available. These are the so basically your core fields are available naturally. So if you have Joomla without custom fields, you'll know you have your title, your subheading, your description, um, image float right. This we, we basically provide everything Joomla has for you, um, and we allow you to output in a different position. We also allow you to load modules by position. So say you have a, um, a portfolio website again, and you want to output. Um, related portfolios at the bottom and you've got a module for that well you can you can use 
load a module into that view, not a problem. And then we have the advanced fields at the bottom. So you can display after title plugin output. So when the plugin is called, um, you have basically hooks which will call, be called in this scenario after the title is rendered, we will then call um, some plugins and the plugins insert what they want to into that and that's what's output. So you could still call that if you have plugins doing that naturally in your website and they're useful to you, you can still call that if you want to. Um, same with bus before display content and after display content. Then we just have a test one at the bottom. And then you've obviously got you've got your warning fields as well, which are core fields, um, which are expired warning, not yet published warning, and unpublished warning, which um, editors would see when they're editing the article. So again, it's basically giving you full control of the article output or any com content output. So you can control it however you want to with a drag and drop. And if you want to add grids, um, you can you literally just click, you go to add a row. Number of columns in your grid are three because we want to have three in the scenario. This is a slightly more advanced feature. It just tells you how they're going to be rendered. So with a framework, you have what's known as columns. So you have Bootstrap is basically a 12 column framework and UIKit is a 10 column framework. So this would be one of three, one of three, one of three, which would be the same as um, col hyphen MD hyphen one hyphen three. And if we wanted the first one to be um, first one to be one of three, but the second one to be two of three, um, we would use the two column. One, three, and two, three. So that would then give you, as you see, so it basically gives you 30, 60% width. And then you can add your fields into them. And let's go add a custom field. And again, you select your custom field. Preparation time. And output zone. So it just makes your life easier. Um, yeah. Any question? Yeah. So if you basically by default when you install Easy Layouts, you will get the core Joomla output ready built for you. So it will create your single article and a few other views of how it would be displayed in the Joomla core. So once you enable them, that's how it would be displayed in the core. But when you click new, you need to see the left one. <sighs> Such small screens, when will projectors upgrade? <laughs> um, <laughs> small eyes. So you can select the layout name, which, for example, single article, featured article, featured articles, and all your standard Joomla com content views. So articles by category. Again, we'll just go with standard. And then click. Also so small. Yeah. So, because you create a new layout, by default it would be empty, which is just basically a blank row and be quite daunting to see, just a bit of blue. Um, so you can just recreate the Joomla layout again. So if I click match default Joomla layout and click save, you now have your page heading, your article heading in a row by itself, and then your next row is you have your email icons, your print view, then your next row is your information block, your tags, and then a full image. So you get the default output, and you can see how it's rendered, and when you save it and enable it, you can see, and then you can drag and drop. So if you want your, your subtitle at the bottom, you can drag it to the bottom, if you want your image at the top, if you want to add another column. It just makes it easier, rather than playing with code, hacking away at it, remembering your field ID when I mean, you can select it by name and just input it where you want to put it because you can just drag and drop. Um, because, for example, you've got the article body. Well, actually, I don't want it there. I want it up there. If the screen's big enough. And now it's the next row above, not at the bottom. It just makes it really intuitive and just saves a lot of time. Think.
We also have multi-language support, as does Comfield. So if you were to add a field, custom field, the value is always going to be output in what it's written in. But you may want the custom field to apply to multiple languages. Um, so you can add a language string within the custom field label. So if you use my underscore text underscore, underscore string and then went to your Joomla overrides, language overrides. Does everyone know what language overrides are? Yeah, went to that, added this as an override and output the text. The field label will then render for that for every single language you have. Saves multiple duplication. So easy layouts, new features coming soon are, as Garen pointed out, conditional field display, filter module, customize, customizable edit pages by type. So as Brian team had talked this morning about having a simplified edit page, it's something we will move on to once we've refined the easy layouts approach, is allowing you to customize what's shown to the user in the edit pages per category um, and types as well, because you, we also need that in Joomla because there's limited display flexibilities. More custom field types and output options because Joomla custom fields is great. We can just add fields easily. So if there's fields that you need, obviously you can vote them up and put them on the feature, feature forum and more people want them, the more soon they're implemented. Um, we've already added maps. We've already added um, related articles as well. So we can do that. More custom field types and output options are just great, really. We can just extend and extend. Every day we're having more ideas. Yeah, limitations are endless. And obviously language specific layouts will be next as well. So you can, so imagine having to do a multilingual website with three languages and having to duplicate everything, well, we will allow you then to use the same fields but change different sections in it. So rather than having a template override, which has loads of um, English text and expecting people to manually translate that, you can then translate that in, you can then assign that to another language and then write it in the native language rather than trying to use for example, Google Translate on your website or something silly like that. Um, you can get it translated exactly as you need it to output. Um, RTL support could also be done that way because different languages are different, has RTL support, so your template or ride would need that, whereas you wouldn't want RTL support in your English language. Um, so yeah, again, adding more features in. So you can view the website on basically the demo, which you've briefly saw on a, such a small screen today um, at demo.easylayouts.net and that will basically allow you to switch on easy layouts on and off from what we've just quickly created um, and allow you to view how it works. Quick question. Um, I see you've set them up sort of um, an article but the user themselves, so my client that I've built the website for, yep. if they've got They've got an article, say they've got 20 articles, all in the same category, um, but one page has got a three column layout, the other one has got a two column layout. Would the customer, would my user be able to choose the layout? Page? No. That's the idea behind um, custom fields. So you could have different categories. Um, they would have to have different categories. Yeah. We could we, look at doing yeah, it's it. Bit, but then the problem is the next and the previous buttons. But you see, usually for content types, you would have a similar page output yeah. um, because you're trying to get your user to output what you've created for them yeah. without messing it up. So like in Brian's talk today, he went on about um, how to create template bases on articles. So you would create a load of article templates, which the users would probably go in and edit and then save by mistake, and then yeah. you'd lose the template. Well, what we're doing is we're creating the templates, and all they have to do is input the information because if you have com content and you have a category of content um, or a category of blog, a category of portfolio, you apply one to each category. So your portfolio would look different to your content and so on. So it gives, it gives you a lot more control. Um, I pr 
yeah, I can see where you're coming from with the user side of thing. It's, it's only but that's a very very yeah, that that's a big variation to give yeah. you a lot of control. In that scenario, page builder would probably be better for them if they're requiring that much control over every individual page. They're very particular and they're they're so used to working with PDFs and things. They want each page very specific and they're very they are very yeah. It, the, the problem I would see with doing that scenario is the website would become very unuser friendly because if you're making it so different on every single page for the user that's coming to the page, bearing in mind it's the same type of content, um, it would be very unintuitive to look down there for an image when it should be up there and all the other pages, or you know, look for information there that's normally down here. It wouldn't make much usable sense, in my opinion. It's, I can see use cases. It's, it's, it's scenarios, very right? specific in that they sell um, hand built green oak framed houses. Yep. So they are very much focused on design. And on some pages, they have bullet points, but they want their bullet points all to line up. Uh, you know, Because of what they build, they want their website to be so specifically designed. So I've been creating layouts for them, and then they've just been changing the text yeah so, but they do need to be able they would if i gave them this they would need to be able to select this is a three column layout or this has got one with an image that's two columns wide that side it's got two columns of text here it's, it's that sort yeah. of layout so for that scenario it is to me it's more of a page builder type because you're well, trying there's something we could have it's, it's yeah. basically what, we're what i'm saying is because at the moment you're just choosing by Category. By category, language, language. Language. And you just want just an additional criteria. Yeah, just that the user picks it, which which language could be, it is. Could be doable. Yeah. How would you base that on? Well, either we'd have a separate custom field type, which would be the names of the layouts. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, suppose you could do that. Doing. You have to create quite a few. But yeah, I suppose, yeah, there's ways of doing it, yeah. Demand, yeah, so it's, it's a demand, absolutely. I'm very excited, that's great. This just sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> so easy. <laughs> but it would just mean that your users would have a structured input. Um, yeah. It is, they wouldn't necessarily have control over it, they would input the content and yeah. it would be structurally output. And for 99.9% .9 of the sites I do, that's just, that's absolutely perfect. Well, yeah, yeah. exactly, and that, that's what, well, I foresee, I'm sure most people foresee as what most clients have, really. And that's it, really. Any more questions? No? Cool. Thank you. Perfect.